Alright, so here it is finally, my video about my capstone project. I'm very, very, very excited. As I have said in my previous video, or maybe I didn't say it, I don't remember, it was a while ago, but my game that I made for my capstone project is based off of the Chrome Dinosaur game, which is why you see footage of the Chrome Dinosaur game. And I, I don't know, I, you can kind of see that I'm decently good at it just because I've been playing my game so much, which is, yeah, it's an endless runner, so I got pretty pretty decent at doing the whole endless runner thing. I, I recorded the one where I got my high score, of whatever it is up there, but yeah, that footage didn't carry over. But yeah, uh, I'm really excited to tell you about like how I made my project now that the game programming side is done. So yeah, basically I'm gonna go through like the system development or software development life cycle of my game and just show you how it all came together. So this is the initial build of my game. As you can see, the hitboxes are still being drawn. It's very rudimentary, kind of slow to start out. Um, but yeah, it's a working endless runner. I'm honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It, I'll get to the actual code in a second, but as you can see, it's kind of slow. It needs to be optimized, like, cause it's pretty, easy to be like because it's so slow you have very big windows for when you can get stuff done but yeah as a starting point it wasn't bad i forget how much footage i have i have a lot of footage but yeah as you can see it's just simple colored graphics very rudimentary and yeah, I was still exploring how to make things work. This, and things that I noticed that needed to be fixed in this version of game is the speed. The speed starts off way too slow, and then kind of speeds up a little too quickly, I thought. I thought it sped up a little too quickly. So I basically wrote down a list of things that I wanted to change, and then decided to change them, and yeah. So then this is the version of the game that I built for data output for my machine learning data set. In this version, which I'll show the code later, but in this version it randomizes different variables such as speed, how fast the score goes up, and things like that. Shoot, no, this isn't that version. This is still the same old version. Never mind. But yeah, that I decided to, to like change scoring, speed, and things like that, just so that I could run through a lot of different combinations so I could figure things out. And so, yeah, because if you see the top obstacle is way too high, you're never gonna hit that. And it just gets a little old after a while. But this, this is where my uh, randomized version is. As you can see, it's, a little bit faster because it's like a random number. The score has been implemented in the top right of the display. And yeah, allowing it to have different variables. Like this one feels very good. I noticed that while I was recording this footage. This was a very nice feeling randomized set of numbers. But I still said no just because it was kind of fast. Like if the screen is this big, it's easy to react to, but this is a zoomed in version of the screen. The screen is actually much smaller just because the it's based off of 32 bit player sprite. And so like if that's 32 pixels, yeah, you can kind of see how small the screen might be. I might change that if I make future iterations of this game. But yeah, as you can see, randomized, it changes things up. And at the end, it will ask, did you have fun? And that's how I build my metrics for, or my data set, because at the end of each um, line of data, it will put that number a zero or a one, depending on how much fun, on whether the player had fun. One is fun, zero is not fun. Boolean values, if you're familiar with coding. But <clears throat> yeah, it just randomizes. And I probably played about 
well for sure in my data set I played about 158 but I had to redo my data set several times because I had to like change the form of it or change how many things were included but here's the code as you can see we import all those lovely things this is pretty similar to the code I showed in my first video on my project so I'm not going to explain every single line but as you can see there's all the same stuff I implemented a falling quote unquote falling that's just like when you die your thing player turns yellow shows that you died the big thing is collision collision detection that's a fun thing to add in actually it really wasn't that hard and then adding in the score as you can see when I redraw the window it will add in that text these are all my variables as you can see all the ones that I'm making for my data set have been randomized so it's choosing a different variable and I tried to make that as large as possible now this is my output generation basically it creates an output string puts all those numbers in and stuff uh, there's all the different obstacle types I have there because I added more obstacle uh, configurations and like I said there's the whole one for fun or zero for no fun and yeah that's basically how I created my machine learning data, data set so let's look at what I actually did for my machine learning set the first thing is just yeah that was the example that it's working off of this is what I actually did I ended up having to copy in my data set just because TensorFlow was not liking what I was doing but I, yeah, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. It's a lot of data. I think, like I said before, it's about 158 lines of data. Each of those is just the very, the various game mechanic settings. And then each of those is paired with a one or a zero. Oh, I accidentally clicked on something there. <laughs> Don't mind that. But yeah, lots of ones and zeros. And so those are put in as the features and the label. And then I put those into my model. And the model goes from very large layers to small, kind of as a funnel, funneling it down to that final answer of is it fun or is it not? And yeah, I accidentally scrolled too far. But yeah, and then I ran it for about 575 epoch so it ran a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of times and it ended up getting about 95 percent accuracy so then i printed out my predictions just so that you can see them they're not very useful in that form this is what the actual predictions are either zero or one pretty cool i i think it's cool but then i checked some of the numbers that i knew were good and it said yes they are good that's cool meaning that they are and then I checked uh, random ones and then this is how I optimized my actual code is I've put in numbers and see if my machine learning model would say that they're good numbers and basically just played around until I got a version this isn't a good version that's not the version I ended up using but that's how I created the settings for my machine learning optimized version of my game so Here's the final version of my game. As you can see, I've added textures and I've added, you know, a little bit more. As you can see, it looks a lot more responsive. I'm, I'm pretty proud of how the textures and like final look and feel of the game ended up. This is only one version. I think this is the non-machine learning optimized. This is the personally optimized version of the game, but it's, yeah, it turned out really cool. I, it's, just a cute little game of a pink ball jumping over obstacles and ducking under them. And yeah, it has a lot more heart. I don't know. I, I, the upgraded graphics definitely yield a slightly better user experience. And yeah, I'm trying to think what else there is to say. So yeah, I've started testing with this asking people to play my game. Like it says there, thanks for playing. Please tell Caleb your score. This is the actual version that I'm using in test. Well, one of the versions I'm using in testing, because like I said, there's the machine learning optimized version and the personally optimized version. So yeah, I'm actually using this in testing and hopefully within the next few weeks, I'll have, well, I will. In the next few weeks, I will have results or not my 
uh, yeah, on the results of my study. So yeah, that is how my capstone project is currently going. And yeah, it's, it's a beautiful time. Thanks so much for watching this video. I deeply appreciate it. If you could hit subscribe, that'd be cool. Also, if you wanna like this video, also cool. Comment your thoughts, opinions, reactions. Tell me if you wanna play my game. Tell me if my game looks like hot garbage. You know, all feedback is greatly appreciated. And yeah, just again, thank you so much for watching my video and feel free to watch the other videos on my channel.